Hi friends, welcome back. Let's discuss the next question on static timing analysis. Friends, in previous question, we discussed a similar circuit where we were given a circuit which didn't have this clock buffer. The rest, the circuit was same as it is in our previous question, which was question number 11. So here we have added one extra clock buffer. So how it is going to affect, let's see how it is going to affect the setup and hold timing equations. So here, as we discussed in the previous questions, we have this flow, which is going to work as a launch flow, as well as at a capture flow. The data which is launched by this flow will back getting captured by the same flip flow. So if I simplify this circuit and if I assume that there are two flip-flops and they are like this, this is flip-flop 1, this is flip-flop 2 and we have one inverter here and then this is going to flip-flop 2. Let's assume this is flip-flop 1 and this is flip-flop 2. And now we have a clock with clock buffer and then buffered output is actually going to both of the flip flops. So this is our clock. So here we have added one clock buffer. So if we add a clock buffer here, then how it is going to affect the setup and hold the timing equation. So friends, remember that this is our launch path or data propagation path and this is our capture path. Data is captured by the flip flop 2 at the next clock edge. So this is our capture path and this is our launch path. So while deriving setup and hold timing equations, what we do is we calculate the delay through the launch path and then through the capture path. So if we remember the setup equations which we derived, so let's assume that we do not have this clock buffer inserted. So what is our setup equations? Our setup equation will be clock time period minus T setup of capture flip flop this should be greater than or equal to propagation delay which is clock to clock to q delay, q delay of launch flip flop plus combinational delay so this is our equations when we do not have this clock buffer inserted now if we insert this clock buffer the clock signal which is coming out of this clock buffer is going to both launch flip flop and capture flip flop so the delay introduced by this clock buffer is basically common in launch path and in capture path so if we add suppose this is going to add some p skew so whatever the skew introduced by this clock buffer is before the launch and capture flip flop so this skew is basically common for both launch path and capture path so if we add p skew here we will have to add T skew here as well. So the T skew at both sides will get nullified. So if the clock buffers or any kind of delay logic is introduced in a path which is common for both capture for both capture and launch path, then that particular actually delay will not affect the setup and timing, uh, setup and hold timing equations. So hope this point is clear here. So if we see in the second part of our question is what is the effect of clock buffer on maximum clock frequency of the circuit. So maximum clock frequency of the circuit derived basically from the setup timing equation and in the setup timing equation as we saw if the, 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 the buffer is basically common in both kept, uh, launch path and the capture path. So basically the effect of the clock skew which is introduced by this clock buffer will get nullified and we do not have any effect of this buffer inserted in our setup equations and that means our maximum clock frequency or the minimum time uh, clock period is not going to affect by this uh, inserted clock buffer. So friends hope this point is clear. So now let's see the first part of the equation which is find out any relations with the below given timing parameters. So we are given the setup time, the hold time and the clock to queue delay of the flip flop. So now let's see first what is the hold timing equations and if 
these parameters satisfy our hold equation so the hold e e timing equation is nothing but our t hold time should be less than t clock to q delay plus t combinational delay so here the hold time of the flip flop is 4 nanosecond should be less than or equal to t clock to q delay which is 2 plus t combinational delay so the t combinational delay is basically nothing but introduced by this not gate which is 1 nanosecond so 4 less than equal to 3 our whole timing equation is basically not satisfying and that means there is a hold violation so friends if there is a hold violation in the circuit the circuit is not going to work and in that particular case we have to make sure that we do something to fix the hold violation and I have covered what are the ways to fix the hold violation in one of our previous so you might want to go through that questions and understand what are the ways to fix the hold violation so now here in this questions actually we are not given that clock period clock period of this clock so basically to determine the setup check actually we need that uh, clock period of uh, the clock signal so that is not given so it won't be possible to find out the setup timing check but if we see this circuit is failing the hold check that means we have to this the circuit is not going to work and we have to find out ways to fix this hold violation to make this circuit work so hope this question is clear if you have any doubts please write down in the comment section also, if you like this video, please hit the like button and please do not forget to subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you won't miss any next questions. Thank you very much.